Okay. We begin selecting an invitation and to be given by our assistant chaplain to be chaplain, Don Savelle. Supreme Grand Master, as we gather here this evening with our brethren, our ladies, and guests, to celebrate the installation of our incoming master, Elliot Schwartz, and his officers, we ask for your blessing to give them strength, wisdom, and guidance for the ensuing year. We ask for your blessing for their wives and their families. And we give thanks to worshipful Don Rosen and his officers and their wives and families. Please bring better health to our, our brethren who are ill. And bless this dinner which we are about to partake. Amen. this law. 
and their offices. They are without personal sir, and await your pleasure. You will then conduct them to the seats prepared for them.
faithful servant. The office of this lodge is lately chosen as our presence and our rank to be installed in the respective offices. You will then present the brother who has been appointed prior of this lodge. Worshipful sir, I present to you Brother Milton Rostein, who has been appointed Tyler of this lodge. Brother Rostein, you have been appointed Tyler of this lodge and you will now be invested with the jewel and implement of your office. guard against the approach of challenge and eavesdroppers, and to suffer none to pass or repass, except such as are duly qualified. So should it admonish us to set a guard over our thoughts, a watch at our lips, post a sentinel over our actions, thereby preventing the approach of every unworthy thought and deed, preserving consciences void of offenses toward God and man, you will now repair to your proper place. Senior and Junior Stewards of this lodge. Brother Blitz and Brother Bonilla, you have been appointed stewards of this lodge, and I will now instruct you in your duties. In olden times, your province was to superintend and provide for the festivals of the craft, to assist in the collection of dues and subscriptions, and to keep an account of expenses for refreshments and to see that the tables were properly supplied and every brother suitably provided for. In modern times, however, the provision of the actual refreshment has diminished and your principal functions will now be to prepare candidates for admission and to perform those duties which Masonic custom has assigned to you on days of procession to receive the jewels of your office.
Marshall. Mm -hmm. I present to you for installation Brother Joel Goldwine, who has been appointed Marshal of this lodge. Brother Goldwine, you have been appointed Marshal of this lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel and symbol of your office. Senior and Junior Deacons of this Lodge. This certificate vouches for the proficiency of the Senior Deacon. Brother Leibowitz and Smyrna, you have been appointed Deacons of this Lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel of your office.
And now, believing from your past deportment in the lodge that your duties will be discharged with ability and zeal, I dismiss you to your respective places.
present the chapter. Worshipful sir, I present to you for installation, Brother Donald Savell, who has been appointed chaplain of this lot. Worshipful brother, that holy book which adorns our sacred altar is the great light in mystery and forever sheds its, its benevolent rays upon every lawful assemblage of free and accepted masons. Teach us from its life-giving precepts invoke upon our labors the blessing of that divine being whose infinite goodness is so fully reveals and unfolds to us and guides us by its lessons of wisdom and truth. You will have faithfully fulfilled your important trust. It is your duty to perform those solemn services which we should constantly render to our great creator and reverently to allure to the brighter worlds and lead the way. And thus by elevating our thoughts and strengthening our virtues and purifying our minds, prepare us for admission into the society of the blessed in the realms of life and life eternal. It is fitting that an assemblage of the sacred volume should be the jewel of your office, and with it you will now be invested. You will now take your proper place. to you for the 10th consecutive year for installation for the Joseph B. Joyce who has been elected secretary of this lodge. Brother Joyce, you have been elected secretary of this lodge and you will now be invested with the jewel of your office. Again. I am persuaded that in the hands the pen will make an enduring record, not only to your praise, but also to the welfare of this lodge. It is your duty to observe the will and pleasure of the worshipful master, to keep a faithful record of all things proper to be written, transmit a copy of the same to the Grand Lodge when required, receive all monies from the brethren, pay the same to the treasurer, and take his receipt there for you will now take your proper place.
you will present the treasure of life. Worshipful sir, I present to you for installation Brother Willie Zwerner, who has been elected treasurer of this lodge. Brother Zwerner, you have been elected treasurer of this lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel of your office. <coughs> the keys have a twofold significance. They are instruments to bind as well as to make loose, to make fast as well as to open. They will never, I am confident, be used by you in any other manner than that which the Constitution, laws, and regulations of the Lodge shall direct. You are to receive all monies from the Secretary, keep a just an accurate account thereof, and pay the same out by order of the worshipful master with the consent of the lodge. You will now take your proper place. who has been elected junior warden of this lodge. The certificate vouches for his proficiency.
represent the senior board of elections. Worshipful Master, I present to you for installation Brother Milton Cappen, who has been elected senior warden of this lodge. He is of good morals, true and trusted, and has possessed the love and confidence of his brethren. This certificate vouches Brother Captain, you have been elected senior warden of this lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel of your station. <coughs> that level, my brother, demonstrates that we are descended from the same stock, that we partake of the same nature and share the same hope, and that although distinctions among men are necessary to preserve subordination, yet no eminence of station should make us forget that we are brethren, for he who is placed on the lowest spoke of fortune's will may be entitled to our regard, because the time will come and the wisest know not how soon, when all distinction save that of goodness shall, be, shall cease, and death, the mighty lever of human greatness, reduce us to the same state. Your regular attendance on our state of meetings is essential. In the absence of the master, you are to govern the lodge. In his presence, you are to assist him in the government of it. I firmly rely on your knowledge of masonry and attachment to the lodge for, faith, for the faithful discharge of the duties of this important trust. Look well to the West.
skilled in our ancient craft. He is of good morals, true and trusty, and as he possesses a love for our fraternity, I doubt not that he will discharge his duties with fidelity and honor. In your zealous regard for the interest of masonry, and 
maintain your ability to discharge the duties of the master to share. Has chosen you to occupy that honorable position during the ensuing year. Are you willing to accept this important trust? I am. Then, my brother, I shall most cheerfully proceed to install you in the dignified and honorable position to which the suffrage of your brethren have called you, not doubting that the dignity of the Oriental chair will be well preserved in your keeping, and that the interest and welfare of this lodge may be safely confided in your charge. Before commencing your investiture, however, it is necessary that you should signify your assent to those ancient charges and regulations which point out those duties of the master of the lodge and which on no account are ever to be neglected or departed from. They are as follows. You agree to be a good man and true and strictly to obey the moral law. You agree to be a peaceable citizen and cheerfully to conform to the law of the country in which you reside. You promise not to be concerned in plots and conspiracies against the government, but to patiently to submit to the discretion of the Supreme Legislature. You agree to pay a proper respect to the civil magistrate, to work diligently, credibly, and act honorably by all men. You agree to hold in veneration the original rules and patrons of the Order of Masonry and their regular successors, supreme and subordinate, according to their stations, and to submit to the awards and resolutions of your brethren when convened in every case consistent with the constitutions of the Order. You agree to avoid private picks and quarrels and to guard against intemperance and excesses. You agree to be cautious in the carriage and behavior, courteous to your brethren and faithful to your lodge. You promise to respect genuine brethren and to discountenance imposters and all presenters from the original plan of masonry. You agree to promote the general good of the society, to cultivate the social virtues, and to propagate the knowledge of the art. You promise to pay homage to the Grand Master for the time being, and his officers when duly installed, and strictly to conform to every edict of the Grand Lodge or General Assembly of Masons that is not subversive of the principles and groundwork of masonry. You admit that it is not in the proper power that any man or body of men to make innovations in the body of masonry. You promise a regular attendance on committees and communications of the Grand Lodge on receiving proper notice and to pay attention to all the duties of masonry on convenient occasions. You admit that no new lodge should be formed without permission of the Grand Lodge, and that no continent should be given to any regular lodge or to any person clandestinely initiated therein, being contrary to the ancient charges of the order. You admit that no person can be regularly made a Mason in or admitted a member of any regular lodge without previous notice and due inquiry into his character. You agree that no visitor shall be received into your lodge without due examination and producing proper vouchers of having been initiated in a regular lodge. These are among the charges and regulations of free and accepted Masons, and to these your assent must be freely given to you Submit to these charges and promise to support the regulations as masters have done and all ages before you. Absolutely. Then my brother. <laughs> then my brother, in consequence of this assurance, 
and with full confidence in your capacity and zeal, I will now install you in Worshipful Master of Westchester Menorah Lodge, number 572. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you will invest him with the jewel of his station. That square, my brother, is an emblem of morality, and it is the special badge of the master's office. It should constantly remind you that not only by precept, but by example, you should promote good morals among the brethren, and thus endeavor to avert the shadow of any scandal or reproach against the fraternity. Your former life has given evidence that this jewel will not be an unmeaning symbol in your hands, and I solemnly charge you to take good care that its luster do not be in to any acts of yours. I now present you the Book of Holy Writings. It is the great light of masonry and should ever be the great law of the brotherhood. It will guide you in all truth and will direct you to eternal happiness. And an attentive regard to the divine precepts it contains will ensure your success in the fulfillment of the duty you now are about to assume. The working tools of our craft will next be presented to you that as the master workman, you may instruct the craftsmen in the various duties and virtues which they have been selected to illustrate. The square teaches us to be, to re regulate our every action and to let our conduct be governed by the principles of morality and virtue. The compass teaches us to limit our desires in every station and never to suffer our passions or our prejudice to become the masters of our judgment. The rule directs the undeviating discharge of our duties that we should press forward in the straight path of right and truth without the pointing to the one hand or the other in all our doings having eternity in view. The plum is an emblem of moral residue. It teaches us to avoid all dissemination and to pursue the honest and upright course in life which will tend to be our elevation in the higher realms of immortality. There are still other important things which you will receive in charge. This book of constitutions, you are expected to diligently search, and from time to time cause its contents to be read in your lodge, that men may remain ignorant of the precepts it enjoins, or of the ordinances which it promulgates. This book contains the bylaws of your lodge, which will be your special duty to see carefully and punctually executed. And this is the chart under the authority of which your lodge is held in which you are carefully to preserve and duly transmit to your successor in the master's chair. Brother Master Solomonis, you will conduct the master to a station in the east.
Great Tuck, you, on your ascension to this time-honored seat. The duties incumbent upon you in your exalted station are fraught with grave responsibilities. Remember that the honor, reputation, and usefulness of your lodge will be materially dependent upon the skill and acidity which, with which you manage it, its concerns, and that the happiness of the members will be generally promoted in the proposition to the watchful care with which you cherish the genuine principles of this institution. For a pattern of imitation, consider the great luminary of nature, which rising in the east regularly diffuses light and luster to all within its circle. In like manner, it is your providence to spread and communicate light and instruction to the brethren of your lodge. Forcefully impress upon them the dignity and high importance of masonry, and seriously admonish them never to disgrace it. Charge them to practice out of the lodge those duties which they have been taught in it, and by amiable, discreet, discreet and virtuous conduct, to convince mankind of the goodness of this institution, so that when a person is said to be a member of it, the world may know that he is one to whom the burdened heart may pour out its sorrows, one to whom the distress may prefer its suit, one whose hand is guided by justice, and whose heart is expanded by benevolence. In short, by the diligent observance of the bylaws of your lodge, the constitutions of masonry, and above all, the hot holy scriptures which are given to us as the rule and guide of our faith, you will be enabled to acquaint yourself with the highest honors here and lay up a crown of rejoicing which shall continue when time shall be no more. Brothers, senior and junior wardens, you are too well acquainted with the principles of masonry to warrant any distrust that you will be found wanting in the discharge of your respective duties. Suffice it to say that what you have been praiseworthy in others, you should carefully imitate, and what in them may have been appeared defective, you should yourselves avoid. You should be examples of discretion and propriety, for it is only by a due regard of our laws and regulations, as shown in your conduct, that you can expect obedience to be from others. You are assiduously to assist the master in the discharge of his trust, diffusing light and imparting knowledge to all whom he shall place under his care. In the absence of the master, you will succeed to higher duties. Your requirements must therefore be such as will ensure proper instruction to the craft. From the spirit which you have been here to evidence, I am entertain no doubt that your future conduct will be such as will merit the applause of your brethren and the testimony of a good conscience. Brethren of Westchester Manor Lodge number 572, such is the nature of our Constitution that as some must necessarily rule and teach, so must others of course learn to submit and obey. Humility in both is the essential duty. The officers who have been chosen to govern your lodge are significantly conversant with the rules of propriety and the laws of the institution to avoid exceeding the power with which they are entrusted. And you are of too generous disposition to envy their preferment. I therefore trust that you will have but one aim, to please one and unite 
in the grand design of promoting happiness. Finally, my brethren, as this association has been formed and perfected in so much unanimity and concord, so may its long continuous, may you long enjoy every satisfaction and delight and disinterested friendship can afford. May kindness and brotherly affection distinguish you, your conduct as men and masons. With your peaceful walls, may your grandchildren's children celebrate with joy and gratitude the annual recurrence of this auspicious solemnity. And may the tenets of our profession be transmitted through the lodge, pure and unimpaired, from generation to generation. Worshipful Master, it now remains for me to present you the gallery, the emblem of power. In the hands of the Master, it may be made an instrument of great good or greater evil. The Master governs his lodge, and the welfare and prosperity of your lodge in a great measure depends upon the judicious use in your hands, I am confident, it will be voted for the best entrance of your brother. Brother Master of Ceremonies. <laughs> accepted places of the state of California. I hereby proclaim the officers of Westchester Menorah Lodge to be duly installed. All the brethren will, under the direction of the master ceremonies, salute the worship master in the battery of three times three. Master Mason's only.
play some of the tonight, I believe. When we were married,
mighty effort put forth in a convention of Southern Baptists forbidding any of their members to join or maintain identification with our fraternity, even though such illustrious Southern Baptist members were former presidents of the United States. In recent years, Harry Truman and Gerald Ford. Our Masonic membership in California at the beginning of the 1980s was approximately 265,000. Today, it is about 125,000. And our Grand Lodge is predicting in the worst case scenario, straight line projection, a possible decrease to 45,000 members in 10 years. We have to be strong and we have to be courageous. We have to reverse this negative trend by attracting men who will maintain our fraternal tenets of brotherly love, relief, and truth. Men who will be able, through their efforts and courage, and your efforts and courage, to build our fraternity. We must do what is not being done. We must do what has not been done. We must update. We must change. We must be strong, and we must be courageous. In our offerings in our Lodge calendar this year, a variety, there are a variety of events. Events specifically designed for the women, for the family, for the men. Events where we reach out into our community. Events that are free or very affordable. And special events that should be spectacular. We have events that are open to Masons and non-Masons, events to attract new members, and to satisfy our current membership. I ask you, one and all, to participate, participate, participate. To attend those events which are fundamental to our organization, and to attend those events which I hope will titillate your fancy. I ask you to be strong and of courage. I ask you to attend our free events. And as a side, we have a kitty uh, uh, event coming in December 19th. We have a free event January 20th. We have a ladies' night coming February 10th. We have Jim and Pam Super Sunday coming the end of January. I ask you to attend our paid events. I ask you to attend a masquerade ball. I ask you to help out at our clinic. I ask you to honor our Hiram Award recipient, to join a line dance class and show off your newly acquired dance skills at our barbecue. I challenge you to bring a non-Mason to one or, one or more of our social get-togethers. I ask the ladies to schedule a bit of their social calendar around the function of ours and invite another couple that is not affiliated with our organization to join you, to join us, to join our fraternity. I ask you for your participation in running the Lodge. Not in Lodge administration, but in suggesting ideas for anything that is of interest to you and might be of interest to those of Lodge membership. I ask the men to bring a buddy to a degree meeting or a stated meeting, a member who you haven't seen in Lodge recently. I ask the men to learn the station, participate in a degree, serve on a committee, give a prayer. I ask all of you to be strong. I ask all of you to be courageous. I ask each one of you to participate, participate, participate. In my recent years spent in the Lodge, I have met many good men and, and many good women. People I am very proud and happy to know and call my friends and brothers. I want, however, to pay special attention to Worshipful Maury Wood, who is a true brother who coached me through most of my basic degrees with, and with whom I used to sit at Stad's restaurant. 
many, many, many years ago and talk about the Lodge. I want to say special thanks to the late High Laban Sergeant and his son-in-law, I use him who gave me my petition, to Worshipful Bill Matskin and Worshipful Stan Hirsch, who talked to me about joining the line. I was appointed by Worshipful Stan. I remember Worshipful Dick Vega, a hell of a guy who made me a steward. Worshipful Harvey Chernick and I were code stewards. Harvey also counseled me well. Past masters such as Mill Flack, Russ Weiss, Don Rosen, and he is a past master now, Bob Cooley, <laughs> Tony Alferi, Bob Granis, are men from whom I have tried to learn. I also have to give a very special acknowledgement to Worshipful Murray Rosenfeld. I have designated Murray as my Masonic uncle and his wife, my designated man. No person has been as fortunate as I am to have such wonderful parents. I have designated Murray as my Masonic uncle and his wife, my designated man. No person has been as fortunate as I am to have such wonderful parents. I am very, very proud to have my mother here. I extend my gratitude to my wife and children for their endurance in the past years, but especially to my wife. She has participated, participated. <laughs>
symbol of power. Use it with temperance, use it with fortitude, use it with prudence, and above all, use it with justice. I now place this item in your hands. Use it, I know, as a true master of law. Thank you. I thank you, Mill. I thank all the line. And I really, off the record or on the record, I want to thank all of you here. Um, I can't tell you how emotional this is. It's, it's very moving and very satisfying. And everyone says, take it easy, enjoy it. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy it. And this gavel I will use to the 
very, very best of my ability. Thank you very much. We are very fortunate in this lodge. We have a number of men who have sat in this chair before me that have given of their all. They have worked hard, they have sweated, they have argued, but not with malice, and not with maliciousness, but only for the best of this lodge. And what I would like to do now is introduce the past masters of Westchester Menorah Lodge, lodge who are in attendance. I ask them to stand in their place because I think it would be rather difficult for have, to, to have them approach these. But we all know them. Their influence is everywhere. Um, I can't say they are omnipotent, but they really are very pervasive. Um, we have a strong organization. Because of the membership and because of the strong and uh, timely, tedious, hard-working uh, efforts of our past masters. I will start uh, off as our um, most uh, uh, youngest past master by introducing the youngest past master to the newest past masters first. Our newest past master, first time call. I don't know if he has any jokes prepared, but to sing karaoke. <laughs> Worshipful Donald Rosen Jr. <laughs> Brother Han Worshipful Hans Nielsen who was master in 1991. <laughs> Worshipful George Lewis, master in 1990. Mitchell, my brother-in-law. 
Law, 1983. Over and over again. 
from the lives we thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you officers.
Charles Mahler, Chick Mahler. Morris Rice Moss, James Reynolds Clark, John Nathan Schwartz, John Harrison Edwards, Heinz Gerhard Lewis, Julian Gelfand, Alfred Lowenstein, David James Moody, Moody, Eric Arnold Schubert, Herbert Ruby, Michael Rosenblum, Nathan Spiegelman, Raymond Ralph Kaufman, Nathan Venner, and David Robert Donan, Passmaster. Soft and safe to thee, my brethren, be thy resting place. smile with favor on our past officers and their families. We have devoted time and energy to make Westchester Menorah Lodge the exemplary lodge it is today. Amen. So, so what it is. Is.